Once again, I welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. So we really started uh, looking to the problems to make ourselves more familiar with interpretation of the data obtained from these important four spectral methods. This helps in understanding, first if we are familiar with interpretation, it would be very easy to elucidate the structure and also look into the properties and reactivity and also applications in many avenues. So let us uh, solve more problems uh, in this lecture as well. Let us look into one problem here. The following peaks were from a 1 H NMR spectra from a 300 megahertz spectrometer convert to ppm unit, delta unit. So for example, one is 693 hertz, another one is 1060 hertz. Again, we know the uh, instrument frequency and simply divide chemical shift in hertz by the spectrometer frequency you get in ppm. For example, here 2693, 693 divided by 300 into 10 raised to 6 would give you 2.31 into 10 to the power minus 6 or 2.31 ppm. And similarly, when you take this one, it becomes 3.53 ppm. So that means when in a 1 H NMR spectrum, they are called at 300 megahertz. CHOH appears at 2.31, whereas CHCl appears at 3.53 ppm. And you should remember this value, chemical shift value in ppm does not change with the field strength. So whether I take 500, 600, 700, it still remains 2.31 only. The corresponding chemical shift in hertz increases, but once when you take the ratio, it is independent. So that is the reason uh, we represent always chemical shift in ppm uh, to avoid any confusion and minimize complexity. So now let us look into another interesting example here. Butane to own shows a chemical shift around 2.1 ppm on a 300 megahertz spectrometer in the 1 H NMR spectrum. How far downfield is the this peak from TMS in hertz? TMS always we consider as 0. So if the spectrum was done with a 400 megahertz instrument, would a different chemical shift be seen? On 400 megahertz spectrum, what would be the difference in hertz from chemical shift and TMS? So there's three questions are there associated with uh, this question. First one is how far downfield is this peak from TMS in hertz? Uh, for that one, what one should do is you have 2.1 ppm into 300 uh, into 10 raised to 6 and divided by this one, it will give 630 hertz. So the peak at 2.1 ppm would show at 630 hertz and a 300 megahertz spectrometer. So we convert it from ppm to hertz. And then since TMS is always at 0 hertz, so the peak would be 630 hertz only downfield from the TMS. If the TMS is here, 0 uh, for TMS, so it will be somewhere here, it is 630 hertz. If the spectrum was done with a 400 megahertz instrument, would a different chemical shift be seen? The question, the answer is no. A different chemical should not be seen in PPM. The point of using the PPM scale is to be able to discuss the same peak at the same chemical shift, unlike when using hertz. Hertz it will vary, but when you convert that hertz into ppm, it does not vary and it is independent of magnetic field strength. And then on 400 megahertz, what would happen? You simply multiply uh, 2.1 ppm with 400, so then you get 840 hertz. So that means on a 400 megahertz, the frequency chemical shift will be appearing at 840 hertz. And again, if 840 hertz, if you divide by 400, you get back your 2.1. So this itself shows how chemical shift when measured in ppm is independent of magnetic field strength. So just to show this fact, I have taken this example here. Now let us look into another example focusing on 1 H NMR or NMR spectroscopy. If you look at a spectrum of paraxylene, common name, or 1,4 dimethyl benzene is called paraxylene and 1,2 is orthoxylene, 1,3 is metaxylene. 
and how many types of protons are there and what does the ratio mean? Uh, ratio means we are referring to equivalent number of different set of hydrogen atoms or nuclei that is what we refer to. So, let us look into it. Uh, one four this is a one, one four dimethyl benzene. Just if we look into it, how many different type of hydrogen atoms are there? So, these four are equivalent and these two are equivalent. That means, we have two different types of hydrogen atoms. As a result, when we look into 1 H NMR of paraxylene, we get two type of signals here. One for methyl groups of 6 protons, another one is aromatic protons of 4 in the ratio 6 is to 6 is to 4 or 1 is to 1.5. I have taken 1 H NMR for this uh, 1 4 dimethyl benzene. I will show you here. So, this is how it looks. As I mentioned, we have two signals are there and two singlets are there. And this singlet one can readily identify for methyl group here and this one is for aromatic hydrogen atoms, aromatic protons. And if you look into the ratio, of course, with uh, integration if you take, it is for 6 protons and it is for 4 protons and then if you take this ratio, it will be 3 by 2, 1 is to 1.5. It is interesting now, how many different type of carbon atoms are there in this molecule? So, now this is 1, this is both are 1 type and this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. We have 4 different type of 1, 2, 3, 4 different type of carbon atoms are there. That means, we should uh, anticipate 4 different type of signals in this molecule. So, this is the one as I mentioned you can see. 2.19 for these two methyl groups and around 7 we are seeing a singlet for this 4 hydrogen atoms. Now, here we are seeing 3 as I mentioned here 1, 2, 3 we are seeing here no not 4 because this is very same uh, because you can you can do rotation like this or you can do rotation like this. So, this brings similarities between these. So, we are expecting only 3 different type of carbon atoms and we are seeing three carbon signals here and you can see here 21.3 for methyl carbon here and then 128 for uh, all of them are at 128 and then this one 135 we are seeing here and again the ratio will be 1 is to 1 this is this is 2 uh, of course uh, you cannot get the ratio here but nevertheless you can get 2 is to mm, 2 is to 4 we are getting here and 4 is there you can also see intensity is very high here. The two signals as there are two types of hydrogens, the ratio is 1 to is to 1.5. So, that means basically if we have to write in words, this is how we have to write instead of using telegraphic shorthand or something like that, it should be clearly spelled out. The area under the peak at 2.19 is 1.5 times greater than the area under the peak at 7.0 or 7.01 ppm. This molecule has two sets of protons. 6 methyl protons and 4 aromatic protons, the ratio is 1 is to 1.5. So, completes the solution. And then in carbon, we have 3 type of carbon atoms are there. As a result, we see 3 signals in its 13 C NMR spectrum. So, now we have 2 more uh, molecules are there. Predict how many signals the following molecule would have and the integrations in 1 H NMR. Sketch the spectra and estimate the integration of the peaks. So, now if you just look into the molecule, you can clearly tell that there are three types of signals are anticipated in 1 H NMR for this molecule here. And also if you look into 13 C also shows three type of signals here, all three are different. And then how it is going to look like? This, this would be split by this one to give a quadrant. So, this will give a quadrant and then this will give a triplet and this will also give a triplet, but this is slightly downfield. In the same range, if you look into the energy here, they appear like this. So, this is how the spectrum is going to look like. And then this is not coupled. Oh, this is not coupled. You should be able to get a single resonance here. In this case, this dibromo compound, also we have two different type of uh, hydrogen atoms are there. These two are identical and this one is there. And these two will be coupled with this one to show a triplet. And then this will be coupled with these two to show a triplet. 
you add spit two triplets here. So, let us look into NMR and carbon also we add spit two signals in this case, three signals in this case. So, here 1 H NMR there will be three signals in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1, 3 is to 2 is to 1 that is what I have written here. There will be two signals in the ratio 1 is to 1 here because 2 1 is to 1 and 13 C NMR there will be three signals and 13 C NMR there will be two signals here. I have also taken 1 H as well as 13 C NMR spectra for these molecules. I will display now. You can see here we have a triplet and a quadrant and then a singlet. The singlet is for this one here and then the quadrant is for this one which we can tell is a quadrant and then 3.53 and then for this one a triplet is here in this spectrum. And then I have also taken 13 C. 13 C also as expected it should show three signals. One is here 14.9 for this one and then 67, 67 for uh, this one here because this is next to this one and also both are next to oxygen. So, they are little bit down field. So, it appears around 59 and this appears around 67. So, this is 13 C NMR spectrum shows three signals and uh, 1 H NMR also shows three signals in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 3. And now, let us look into the spectrum 1 H NMR spectrum of uh, this tetra bromo uh, propane. Here it is, it shows two triplets. So, the middle one this is 3.21 is here and then these two are here triplet. And then 13 C NMR would show only two signals here. This is 54.9 and then these two are 40.3 here. Ratio also you can see here this is 1 is to 2 almost intensity wise you can tell. Now, let us look into another interesting molecule here. How many proton signals are expected in the 1 H NMR spectrum of the compound shown below? Also predict the number of 13 C NMR signals. If you just look into it, this looks like a very symmetrical molecule here. You can do C2 rotation, both the portions left and right portions bridged by methylene looks identical and these two are identical and then this one and this one is identical, this one this is for no, no hydrogen here, these two are identical and these two are identical. That means basically 1, 2, 3, 4 signals are expected, 1, 2, 3, 4 signals are expected plus this one, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 signals are expected for this molecule in its 1 H NMR spectrum. And about carbon, carbon if you see this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, you can see here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 different of course, this is 1, 5 different type of signals are expected for this one in its 1 H NMR spectrum. Let us look into it now, see 1, Two, it is merged here because these two are coupled to each other. This also shows a doublet and this also shows a doublet. They are merged here and then there is one and this one is for this OH and then this four is for methylene here and this one and then this one is here, here is singlet. Okay, I have shown here values 3.96 here for this one and then 6.90 Yes, here 6.95, we have two doublets here, something like this. And then 7.14, uh, here it is, this is a singlet, these are identical. So, this is how you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 signals here. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 signals are there. And then if you look into 13C, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 signals are there. What are those 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, rest are identical, mirror image. So, that means you can see 7 signals are there and we are seeing here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, all these are uh, clearly identified, interpretation is done here, you can see here. It is pretty simple, right? Let us look into one more example here. They solve the structure using the following spectral data. Molecular formula is C6H12O3, IR spectrum is shown below here. And of course, I have also taken 1H NMR spectrum also here. And then what you should notice here, here uh, we have a carbonyl heap is there, we have to identify. And then you have CH 
And then, of course, you have OHC is also there. So that means these things you have identified. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six signals are there, and some of them are much reshielded. Uh, and then there is one with uh, five splitting. That means you can think that, yes, here five lines are there. And the five lines means probably it is coupled with two equivalent methylene protons. And that means you have a chain of CH to CH to CH that immediately comes to your mind. And then two methyl groups are there. And those methyls are much more deshielded, probably next to oxygen or something like that. So you can speculate. And once if you speculate that one, you can, you can even write the structure. So this is the structure. And of course, the formula is uh, C6H12O3. And this is CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. CH2. The moment you see here a quintet here, the quintet can be assigned to 1.88 here. So that is there. And then 3.69, and this one, a triplet 3.69 is here. And 4.13, this one. And here CH2 is there. And then this is a quadrat 2.41. And then this one is like a typical ether one. So this is here. So all of them are, and, and water is there. And this OH is there here. And the molecule is C6H12O3 has three oxygen atoms. And this has a, it has hydroxy group is there, ketonic carbonyl group is there. And you have identified those things. This is the spectrum recorded for this one. EMS shows. And the same in a different way. Mass data is also added. Mass shows 132. If you go back here, so this uh, 72 plus 12 plus 48, 132 mass. All this information is not given. IR is not given. And then if uh, uh, IR value is also given here, okay, IR shows a prominent peak at 1750 means you can immediately think of having something like this. And then 132 is there. And formula should be worked out by looking into these things. When you look into these things here, you can readily identify one, two, three, four, five, five different type of carbon atoms are there. You can see here one, two, three, four, five different type of carbon atoms are there. And some of them are quadrates. Only one quadrate is there, one quintet is there, and three triplets are there. That means you should be able to judge very wisely where exactly they fall. So you have to see quadrate means uh, one and two quadrates means here. So this one will be a quintet here. And then this one will be triplet. This one will be a triplet. And then this will be a quadrat, And this will be a triplet again. So by just looking into the positions of the peaks and their uh, splitting pattern multiplicity, you should be able to assemble the entire molecule in this fashion with little information from IR as well as mass. I think let me stop here and continue discussion on more uh, very interesting examples in my next few lectures. Until then, have an excellent time.